considering that this is a virtual restoration, we don't necessarily have to take the time and put in the energy to make this restoration look perfect. The objective is to identify a tooth that has the appropriate dimensions for the space where we're planting an implant, both at the occlusal plane, but within the arch form. And most importantly, in my opinion, is to develop a tooth that has the appropriate emergence profile. So can everyone see the CEREC screen here? Okay, so what we've done is we've taken a optical impression for site number 20, and immediately you can recognize that this site is fairly large for a conventional tooth number 20. So in the CEREC software, what we have to do is we have to tell the system that although we're designing a restoration in the site of number 20, it's going to be tricked into designing a tooth by selecting 19 in the proposal in the administration section of the software. When we're drawing a margin, we certainly don't have a prosthetic margin to consider. So we have to freehand a margin on the model. And that's readily done by double clicking uh, on the model and then using the space bar to release the automatic margin finding tool and um, essentially, essentially uh, drawing an outline form for a tooth that we're planning on proposing. Now, because I haven't uh, necessarily taken the time to get the opposing, sometimes the software may not give us an exact proposal that's appropriate for this aspect, but most of the time it gives us a pretty darn good proposal as you see here. And what I'm looking for is having a tooth that really represents the restoration that I envision for my patient. It's certainly in the occlusal plane, it's got uh, adequate proximal contacts, and the buccal and lingual contours are most important to me. And I'll explain why these contours are very important. The transition from an implant to the full contour of the natural tooth that we're trying to restore Deb with uh, requires that we place an implant at the appropriate depth. So if we start with a restoration that has the full contour of the natural tooth, then we can work backwards and really understand what depth of implant placement is most appropriate in order for us to have a result like this. Once we've designed a tooth in the CEREC environment, we actually have to get to the milling stage preview. And it's within the milling stage preview that we're able to actually export this file. Now what we really need to do is export this file as a .ssi file. Now .ssi file is the correct format so that we can actually import this restoration into the cone beam scan. Okay. Now, because we're making a CEREC guide, I haven't taken a Galileo scan at the moment. You can certainly, in your practice, take a diagnostic scan just to evaluate and assess the anatomy to see if she's a candidate for an implant. But I try to actually kill two birds with one stone, so we haven't yet taken that Galileo scan. In order for me to actually make a CEREC guide, I have to generate a scanning appliance. And what we'll do at this stage is, obviously, I've exported this to a USB file, and the way we do that is we go up to the menu system, export the case, and when we export the case, we'll change the file extension to a .ssi file.